POA Technologies is lighting the way in the hybrid integration of silicon photonics, so it makes sense the company would be part of a center called SHINE. The acronym stands for Singapore Hybrid Integrated Next Generation Microelectronics, and it will officially open in June. POET has recently announced it will join the innovative new facility located at the National University of Singapore. Here to discuss the importance of this project for POET and its commercialization plans is the company's CEO, Dr. Suresh Venkatesan. Suresh, thanks for joining us from Singapore. How does it feel to uh, you know, be, uh, be there as, as Shine is uh, starting to pick up? Yeah, it's been great. Um, you know, I, I do try to make it a point to be here, you know, often. Um, you know, I guess my association with Singapore predates Poet, right? I, I mean, we, we started working with, at that time, Chartered Semiconductor back in the late 90s. Um, so, you know, I've had an association with Singapore for over 20 years through Motorola, Charter, Global Foundries, uh, Dense Light, right? And so, you know, um, I've known Professor Aaron Thien for years. Uh, he used to be at Motorola as well um, and has worked with me and for me in various capacities over time. So about a few years ago, um, you know, when we started this um, technology activity with the optical interposer, um, we've kind of hatched um, this whole concept and, keep, you know, ideas around hybrid integration. And, um, you know, you know, he, he really, you know, obviously bought into that vision um, and he's been able to, you know, get the grants and the funding from the government here, uh, pull in other influential industry uh, participants like Applied Materials, Soitec, um, and others who are keen on various forms of hybrid integration, not just photonics, but also for power electronics and, 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 and other high power capabilities that, that some of the industry partners are interested in. Um, but as a consequence of us, you know, plotting the path in a sense uh, to creating such a center, um, you know, we've been able to access, um, you know, NUS's capabilities uh, to do a lot of the work that we're doing on the optical interposer. In fact, a lot of our alpha samples you know, in one way, form, or the other, found its way through the university labs as well. Um, and, you know, of course, for beta and production, you know, we would be more in a production environment. But the labs have given us the ability to create prototypes with a faster turnaround uh, in, you know, than, than us trying to do it ourselves. And, um, you know, critical uh, assembly equipment uh, that we use for our optical engine assembly especially the passive flip to placement of devices. We now have the capability through NUS to do all of that assembly here in Singapore, uh, which really complements what's happening at Superphotonics. And so we're now in a position to be able to do things, um, you know, potentially different from what Superphotonics is doing, especially as it relates to uh, new products around, you know, the remote lasers for artificial intelligence applications, et cetera, you know, we expect a lot of that activity to happen here in Singapore, while Superphotonics is really focused on the 100, 200, 400 G product family. And, and so NUS and the Shine Center has enabled us to have that capability. And, and the other thing that it has done for us is, you know, obviously our labs here are primarily characterization and testing facilities. Um, you know, we don't have in, in Poet Singapore in our offices the ability to put uh, some of our you know, back grinding, dicing equipment, as well as uh, some failure analysis equipment. And so the labs in Singapore allow us to house our equipment in, in a clean room facility there. And, and we're able to do that as well as, as part of the center. So, um, so yeah, it's, it's been a terrific opportunity for us to expand our footprint in Singapore. Uh, without expanding our budget, <laughs> right? So I, I, it's been terrific from that perspective. Yeah, that's that's always a benefit. That for the sake of the viewers, Superphotonics is uh, the joint venture in Xiamen, China, that will be assembling uh, a lot of the optical interposer products. And uh, the, we know what uh, Shine can do for Poet. What 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 is it about Poet uh, Suresh that you think uh, the government of Singapore, the National University, uh, that the, the great value that that your company is bringing? Yeah, you know, uh, 
I mean, there is there are two trends, I guess I would say, in the in the microelectronics or semiconductor space. One is the the push to smaller and smaller nodes, right? 10 nanometer, eight nanometer, seven, five, and so on. And and that train is going to continue with the likes of TSMC and Intel and Samsung, fundamentally three companies kind of pushing that envelope. Uh, but for a lot of the applications, including in you know photonics computing, quantum computing, et cetera, it is fairly clear that just standard silicon scaling is, is really not going to get there and that silicon needs to be augmented with other capabilities. And, and so that's kind of where this whole hybrid integration concept comes about. I mean, I started the word hybrid integration and started talking about it publicly about three years ago, but now it's, it's used almost, you know, uh, by a lot of people, um, you know, and, and we talk, and so, if you, you know, when I say hybrid integration now, I think it's very clear um, what it is that we mean, you know, of course, with the interposer, we have the ability to hybrid integrate different material systems on a common base. Uh, there are many ways to do that. And, um, and, and the same applies to non-photonics devices. What they get is the capability of the interposer to further, um, you know, science. Uh, what we get is, you know, capability to do what we need to do in the near term and the midterm um, to further, you know, our presence in Singapore and to further our commercialization activity around the optical interposer. And of course, we get more visibility. There are six companies now that are part of the center. There are companies that are joining the center that are going to be interested in uh, gene sequencing. And so there are likely to be, you know, expanded opportunities for collaboration down other market verticals, uh, different from just, you know, pure, pure data communications that we're really focused on today. And tell us a little bit about uh, Shine. I understand that you play this integral role in getting that set up. Yeah, so I think Shine is a, a, a center that is actually being uh, uh, proposed by NUS, where they bring in uh, industry collaborators to uh, you know uh, to move the hybrid uh, uh, integration. And I think uh, you know being part of this is uh, is a wonderful opportunity for us to put Poet on the roadmap, not only uh, across the world, but also in Singapore, where, you know, in Singapore, we are in a crossroads between the East and the West. We have a good spread of uh, talent across many different regions. And I think as we interact with the rest of the industry and with the uh, university, I think we have this opportunity uh, to bring uh, greater awareness to what we do over here in Poet. You know, just going back to that, um, the origination of the term hybrid integration, and you're right, about three years ago, I remember doing a Google search on hybrid integration when you first used the term, and it was, you know, like looking for a desert. <laughs> but now all of a sudden, like you said, it's everywhere. Uh, do you take some credit for that? Or is it just a matter of everyone in the industry looking for a way to get smaller and faster? I'll uh, take credit, I mean, it, it, to me, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a vision thing. You know, I, I felt that it was important for us to kind of uh, stake a path in that direction because there are, there are a lot of companies doing, um, you know, regular integration and with silicon photonics and others. And, and when I deter decided which direction we needed to take Poet back in 2017 or 18, you know, I felt that we needed to do something different um, that, that we believe could be important for the industry. And, um, and and also something that we as a small company could could uh, digest and, and deliver. Um, from that perspective, I mean, I go back to the OFC where we delivered a 400 gig FR4 receiver, which is a multiplex receiver. Uh, honestly, we we're one of the few companies to do an integrated form factor of such a receiver in the world. Um, I mean, you know, people have been doing research in silicon photonics for 20 years. We were at it for about three years. And we were able to deliver an, a 400 gig FR4 engine, which is a multiplexed engine for that form in that form factor sooner and faster than anybody else with 100 the budget of some of the companies, right? And, and you know, not, not to try to boast about it, but it's really what that means is that the innate simplicity of what we're trying to do, it's logical, it's simple. 
um, but yet quite innovative and differentiated. And I think that combination, you know, started to resonate with a lot of people when we met them, you know, at the OFC. So uh, from that perspective, it was personally rewarding to me. Uh, but more importantly, I think uh, people believe that this kind of a path of hybrid integration and then moving forward along this trajectory could be a path, right, to, to getting to the end applications that matter to the world. Thank you again for taking the time. Great to see you in the lab in Singapore. And uh, I think that gives a good, good perspective on, on everything that's happening. So uh, safe travels. Hope you get some golf in and, and talk to you again soon. All right. Thank you.